There's a pretty one, Ulysses. There it is. Well, hello, BookTube. I'm Sean the Book Maniac. Welcome back to my channel. Here I am with another version, another go at my the 10 books tag the scrib version the 10 books tag was uh, an early tag that i created as a booktube newbie when i had so much audacity <laughs> to creating my own tag where you just pull 10 books off your shelf or off your tbr or something you saw in the new york times it doesn't matter where you get the books from but you just talk about them and it's a great catch-all tag and i then made a the scribbed version of this tag which is a little more narrowly focused in other words you have to have a membership in scribbed which is like netflix for book nerds they have audiobooks and ebooks and you just talk about the last 10 books that you bookmarked that you saved to your own library to read later so i've done it twice before and a few other booktubers have done it and I'm just going to talk about the last 10 books. They might be audio books, they might be ebooks that I've tagged and try to explain why. So, the most recent one, maybe just last night, was a biography of Lytton Strachey. I don't think I know how to say his name. Lytton Strachey. Strachey? Strachey? I don't think I've ever heard it pronounced. Lytton Strachey. Okay, that's one. Let's see what the second one agrees. Lytton Strachey. Okay, Lytton Strachey. So this is the biography of Le Lytton Strachey. The, the biography is called Lytton Strachey, The New Biography by Michael Holroyd. And I it came to my attention. It's an 816-page ebook on Scribd. Somebody that I follow, I don't know who they are, like they're not a booktuber, but somebody that I've, I'm always adding bookish people to my feed, and I don't remember who he was, I think it was a he, that did a photograph of a paragraph, and I don't usually take the time to read those things, but I did last night, and I loved it, so I'm going to read it to you, put it up on the screen here, just as he put it in his tweet, and because of that, I wanted to read this biography. This is, I think, maybe from the introduction, so it's about the biographer's life. It's not about Strachey at all, and it just made me appreciate that Michael Holroyd is a good writer. So the, the I here is Holroyd, the biographer, not Strachey. The winter of 1963-4 to four was for me a crucial one. After two years' work and a further two years of waiting, I had had my first book published, a biography of Hugh Kingsmill, the novelist, biographer, and critic. But two weeks after publication, I was being threatened with an action for libel. The situation seemed perilous. My chief witness, Hesketh Pearson, who had encouraged me to write, suddenly died. I could muster other supporters, but they would hardly figure as star witnesses. There was Malcolm Muggeridge, who had contributed a marvelous introduction to my book, but who had elsewhere attacked the Queen, and whose appearance in court was guaranteed to stir up violent antipathy in a jury. There was John Davenport, the critic, who at that time had chosen to wear a prejudicial black beard. And there was William Gerhardy, the distinguished novelist who had not actually published a novel for the last quarter of a century, and who, besides denying that he spoke with a slight Russian intonation, would certainly turn up at the wrong courtroom or on the wrong day, whatever precautions I took. That just sucked me right in. So I have read a couple literary biographies in the last couple of years and enjoyed them thoroughly. I think I need more literary biographies in my life, and I'm going to get to this one as soon as I can fit it in. I... I don't think for a nonfiction November, but who knows? It's 800 pages. Of course, everybody knows the famous quote. Somebody, he was a, con Strachey was a conscientious objector during World War I. And somebody, maybe it was during his, tr some police interrogation, I don't know. But somebody asked him what he would do if, if he came upon a German soldier raping his sister. And Lytton Strachey replied, Well, of course I would interpose my body between them. He was a gay man. It's gay humor. I don't think it quite survives into the 21st century, but I love it. <laughs> All right, moving on. <laughs> the next one that I have 
saved is uh, the audiobook of D.H. Lawrence's novel Sons and Lovers, which I have never read. I think I read Lady Chatterley's Lover. I certainly read the naughty bits and watched the the film over and over. <laughs> I hadn't come out of the closet, and I think it was the first nude man I'd ever seen on the screen back in the early 80s, but I haven't read anything else by him. And my dear friend Gwen from Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, and I will be buddy reading Sons and Lovers. I'm going to get a start on it. at the. I'm, I'm hoping to read almost all of it at the end of July and then finish reading it on the plane so as to still keep my August almost completely free for women in translation reading. But uh, I one of the ways that I might accomplish that is to also do it on audio. I previewed this 16-hour unabridged audiobook. It's narrated by Paul Slack, and I en enjoyed his voice. So I will be doing audio text combo, and sometimes maybe only audio, just to uh, to read it. So that is the second one. The third one is a blame it on Karen of Run Right Reads edition. She talked, I think it was a wrap-up video just the other day, about a Trinidadian novel. That's my memory, and I, while I was watching her, I checked, scribbed, and the audiobook is there. It's called Golden Child by Claire Adam, and she enjoyed it. And this comes from Serica Jessica Parker's imprint, SJP for Hogarth Press. And I can't say anything about my impressions of SJP for Hogarth because I am just getting a good start on Mirza's A Place for Us, which is it was the debut novel from the SJP imprint. And I'm not allowed to discuss my reaction to that novel until after the semi-final round of the Book Two Prize has finished. But this novel, from what Karen said, it captured my interest. It's a debut novel set in Trinidad, in rural Trinidad. That's all I need to know. Let's find out a little bit about the author. It's not the silent film star. That's Claire Adams, I've just found out. Well, she's such a new writer, she doesn't have her own Wikipedia page yet, but Penguin Random House, is that the ultimate owner of Hogarth Press? Probably. All it tells me is that she was born and raised in Trinidad and she lives in London. The fourth one is another new release, and I haven't bothered to check all the buzz, but I know there's a bit of buzz, and I, somebody or other on BookTube, maybe really liked it, and I added it as the audiobook because of that, and I can't shout them out because I don't remember who it was. It's Fleischman is in Trouble by Taffy Brodesser Ackner. It's about marriage, divorce, and the bewildering dynamics of ambition. That's quite a handle. It's a woman, I assume so, uh, birth name Stephanie Ackner. Amer she's an American journalist. G GQ, New York Times, staff writer, currently a staff writer on the New York Times. She is in her mid-40s. She is Jewish. Her husband, Claude Brodesser, was not. He converted to Judaism, and now he is more Jewish than she is in terms of observing the faith. I've heard a little bit of good things about it. I've got it on audio. I'm not out anything to try it sometime. Much more of a Sean book is the next one that I saved. It is an e-book, a short e-book, and I can't remember how I found out about it, which means I probably found one of these various bookish Twitter people that I stalk <laughs> mentioned it in a tweet, and that is The Faster I Walk, The Smaller I Am by Kirsty Skomsvold, Norwegian writer, first novel published in 2009. Oh, and that's this one, now newly translated into English as The Faster I Walk, The Smaller I Am. She's written a bunch of other stuff since. It's a small one. I may try to fit it in for Women in Translation Month, certainly as a backup. The female protagonist isn't a people person. She's apparently very old. Everybody whose obituary she reads has died at a younger age than she is now, and that's all I need to know. I like reading books about little old ladies very much, usually. The sixth book, I am 98% sure, 
is a Blame It On Greg of Supposedly Fun book, and that is a memoir called Sissy, a coming of gender story, and the audiobook is narrated by the author, Jacob Tobia, and I'm assuming that the pronoun to be used here would be they, so I'm going to go with that out of an abundance of caution. It's described here as a heart-wrenching, eye-opening, and giggle-inducing memoir about it's what it's like to grow up not sure if you're a boy or a girl. And apparently they were born in Raleigh, North Carolina. I know Greg loved it, and because I've got it here on the audio, I must give it a try. The next one, a lot of these are more and more coming from booktube recommendations, which is wonderful. So the next one, and I will link to, I'm pretty sure that Jacqueline of Six Minutes for Me did a full review on this, in which case I will link to it. But this is a collection of essays called The Reckonings by Lacey Johnson. And also I have it on audio and it's short, six hours. And very heavy topic about sexual assault, justice, sexual violence, retribution. All of that Me Too stuff, which is becoming more and more important. And Britta read it shortly after Jacqueline's review, and she really liked it. So yes, I have to give it a try. And I have a Blame It On Steve Donahue pick here. And that is, I was vaguely aware of this particular biography of the Queen Mother, but only vaguely. And when I was having my mini reading slump a few weeks ago, Steve left a supportive comment and I said, well, come on, give me, give me a recommendation. And this was one of the books that he recommended. The Queen Mother, the untold story of Elizabeth Bowes Lyon, who became Queen Elizabeth the Queen Mother, by Lady Colin Campbell. And I did read his review. I will put a link to his printed, published review. It was wonderful. And uh, Lady Colin Campbell herself was interesting, and I didn't know or had forgotten anything I'd ever heard about her. And she had a lot of access to the people that really could give her the true story about the Queen Mum. And I love the Queen Mum. And this would just be a delightful 500-page biography to read. I have other royal biographies that are in the pipeline ahead of this, but I'm dying to read it. <laughs> I, I, I have to share, since I gave the Lytton Strachey anecdote, I have to give one that's not quite as racy, <laughs> the Queen Mum. It's apocryphal. I don't know if it's true, but it. I, I, I pray that it's true. It must be true. It has the ring of truth to it. <laughs> The Queen Mum loved gay men. She was a fag hag, and all of her servants were gay men, and by the time she was in her 80s and 90s, her servants were in their 60s and 70s. And one day she was up on the 17th floor of her palace, and it was time, it was gin o'clock. So she pressed the buzzer to summon one of her servants, because she was ready for a gin and tonic. And there was no answer, nobody came, so she rang it again and uh, they must uh, maybe they were all out smoking on the back step and the third time finally somebody answered and it was like a PA system or something and she said well I don't know about you old queens but this old queen needs a drink <laughs> that has to be true uh, the queen mom <laughs> number nine is a Canadian novel that I had never heard of the book or the author. The title is Original Prin, and the author is Randy Boyagoda. And I don't know if it was on BookTube or on Twitter, but somewhere I found out about this book and was intrigued. Uh, Randy Boyagoda is... I had never heard of him. Ah, he's of Sri Lankan descent. Boyagoda was born in Oshawa, Ontario. I was conceived in Oshawa, Ontario. Born in 1976 to Sri Lankan Catholic parents. Interesting. And his first novel, Governor of the Northern Province, 2006, was nominated for a major Canadian literary prize, the Giller Prize. Long listed. And the one that I... Uh, original print is much later. It is 2018... I'm just going to, I don't usually read the blurb because I just think it's kind of 
lazy, but it's these two. Sen- I'm going to read you the first two sentences. They're really well written, and hooked is probably what hooked me in. Eight months before he became a suicide bomber, Prin went to the zoo with his family. Following a cancer diagnosis, 40-year-old Prin vows to become a better man and a better Catholic. Well, I'm intrigued. And the last one, number 10, is a trilogy. I wonder if this might have been from Mel. No, I, I just can't place where I heard of this and added it, but I have the whole trilogy in one 700 page ebook. The name of the trilogy is Lark Rise to Candleford, and the author is Flora Thompson. The setting is the countryside of Oxfordshire at the close of the 19th century. The novels are Lark Rise, Over to Candleford, and Candleford Green. This is in my wheelhouse. Flora Thompson, born 1876 in Oxfordshire, died 1947 at the age of 70 in Devon. The trilogy is semi-autobiographical. She was a self-taught and largely self-educated writer. That just sounds so interesting. So I'm not aware of who subs- who has a Scribd membership and who doesn't. So I'm just going to open it up to anybody. If you have Scribd, please do the Scribd version of this tag. Even if you've done this before, because you're, we are always adding new books to our Scribd library, so you could do it again and it would be fresh, right? But also anybody who wants to do the generic version of the 10 books tag, where you just think of 10 books they're on your shelf they're books you've read they're books you want to read they're books you've just heard about from the internet or on booktube and you just want to chat with your subscribers about them that's a fun tag as well it was really useful for me when i first joined booktube because i had all these books that i'd read in my pre-booktube reading life that i never or rarely got a chance to talk about and they were i could just kind of pull them in and just talk about them recommend them for no special reason I didn't have to wait for them to be appropriate an appropriate answer for a tag. I could just talk to my talk to my people about them. So if that appeals to you too, you are tagged. So uncharacteristically, I'm not going to tag anybody because as I said at my alphabet soup tag, I think we as a community need to outgrow the whole concept of tagging. It's a little childish. But so it's inherent in the notion, in, in the, the meaning of the word tag, right? And we like to tag people that we want to see do the tag. But, you know, every time you tag a bunch of people, there's a bunch of people that don't get tagged. And very few of us are gutsy enough, audacious enough to do a tag that we haven't been tagged in. That's the part I want to challenge. I think we should tag whoever we want, but that everybody should feel free to do any tag they please. And don't stand on ceremony, because that's the part that's clicky and ridiculous. All right, there's my little tag rant. Thanks for watching!